In this episode, I'm going to look at an FG100 DDS function generator. We'll put it through its paces, take it apart, and see whether it will or will not meet your requirements. Let's take a look. Okay, what we're looking at here is a function generator. Got this from banggood.com. It's an FG100 DDS function generator. It powers, it's powered up with a USB power supply, so I'm just going to use a, a regular old cell phone charger. We'll put power to this thing and uh, see what it does. So I hit the power button and basically well we can create a sine wave, a square wave, or a triangle wave, or a sawtooth wave, or a re-sawtooth. So it'll generate multiple different uh, types of signals. If I press the cursor button this way I can select the frequency so if I want to take that down, say I want to create a 400 hertz, 440 hertz sine wave. 440. Okay, now when I turn this thing on to run, I should have a 440 hertz tone. Output is a standard BNC. I'm just going to connect this up to my amplifier. And then we'll turn it on. There we go. That uh, noise you hear in the background, by the way, is, I'll just turn that off. My battery charger. My little power supply that I built that has the noisy fan. I'm just charging a battery with it. So we'll turn that off so you don't have to listen to that. But here we go. We'll turn it on. Here's a sine wave. And we can control the output here. We've got a an amplitude control. There's a filter as well. You can turn on and off. Now if I want to change this to a square wave, I have to turn it off. I can change it to a square wave. There's a square wave. A triangle wave. A sawtooth. And a re-sawtooth. And that's basically what this does. It generates tones. It generates a sine wave or any type of signal that you could possibly want for testing your equipment. Let's um, take a look at the actual waveform on the scope. I think probably what you guys are interested in seeing is the scope display. So I'm going to turn it on here. It's actually on now. And I can vary the signal. I've got, I've, I'm going to show you the maximum signal that we can push through this thing. So, as we increase the signal, oh, let me just make sure I'm on. I'm on a times one probe, so we'll put this on a times ten, or switch this to times one. Right now, this is set up. It's calibrated for a times ten, so the the voltage is going to be off on this. Okay, we're on times one setting now, so we're at five volts per division. So as I increase the amplitude here, I'm actually overloading the input to the receiver. That's why it's going distorted. But as you can hear, it's not distorting here. So here's our voltage. We're at five volts per division, so five, 10, 15. We're pushing a little over 20, 20 volts um, peak to peak here. Where's my uh, measure? So 21.19 volts is what we're measuring now, right? So now we're at 10 volts. So we'll change our mode to a square wave. And here's our square wave, nice and clean. We'll make it a triangle wave. There's our triangle wave, looking good. I can find no fault with that.
Sawtooth. Okay, a little bit of a uh, little bit of noise there. That might be just me. I think that's just me moving the, the wires here. There's the sawtooth waveform. And the re sawtooth. Or reverse sawtooth, I guess it is. That's what re sawtooth means. It's a reverse of the sawtooth. So a, a sawtooth will rise and then drop back down. So a re-sawtooth is just a reverse of that, as you can see. Starts out high and goes low. We can also change the frequency. So if I want to uh, say this, take this up to uh, five kilohertz. So this should be five kilohertz. Go back to sine wave. There's also a DC offset. If I press the DC offset, I got, I've got to uh, change my coupling here, I believe, because... Okay, my scope's AC coupled, so to, uh, we're not seeing the DC voltage being applied to it, but what the DC offset does is it applies a DC voltage, either positive or negative, depending on the control, and that's what's pushing the waveform one way or the other, but I'm in AC coupling on it. Okay, the so now I can scope. just have... So that's what the DC offset does. I can now only look at the top half of the of the waveform and bring it back to a full wave or I can take off the top half of the waveform. So that's what the DC offset button does. And of course that will probably work with the waveforms too. It's going to change that uh, frequency down a bit. That's kind of annoying, if you know what I mean. 400 hertz. You can hear what it does to the sound in triangle. So let's see how high this thing can go in terms of frequency. Uh, it says 400 hertz and it's, it's showing here 399.94. Let's uh, see how high we can take this thing up in terms of frequency. So let's try 10 kilohertz. Yeah, this one, it has a 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz. So there's 10 kilohertz. And it's not looking quite as nice. I'm just going to disconnect it from this amplifier because it might be throwing some distortion. But at 10 kilohertz, um, we're seeing some distortion. Twenty kilohertz. Right, smack on twenty kilohertz. Forty kilohertz. Forty kilohertz isn't looking much like a sine wave anymore, is it? That's supposed to be a sine wave. How about a square wave? How does a square wave? It looks pretty ugly too. In fact, they all they're all looking about the same when we get up that high. So it's certainly. Um, 
It's certainly not going up that high in frequency. Let's try 100 kilohertz just for the heck of it. I know it's not going to go, it's, it's going to fall apart, but. Actually, 100 kilohertz actually looked better than it did at 40. <laughs> okay, it's still not a sine wave, but um, um, square wave doesn't do anything. Triangle, oh, oh, sorry, fail. It's not going to go that high. I don't even know what the specs are on this thing. I should probably look at the specs and see how high it says it, it can go. I'm just playing with the display here. How about 455 kilohertz? That's your IF frequency. Will it do 455? I doubt it, but we'll see. 455 sine wave. I'm going to say no. It will not do an IF injection at 455 hertz. In fact, I'm surprised I even got anything out of it at uh, at 100. But the display says it'll go up to uh, 99999. We know that that's not going to happen. Even 100 kilohertz is not going to work on this. 55 kilohertz? Yeah, nice distortion. Let's see where, uh, let's just take it down and see where the uh, signal starts to get really distorted. We'll take it down to 30 kilohertz and start there. So 30 kilohertz, no, fail. 20 kilohertz, uh, no. 20 kilohertz is a fail. That's not a sine wave. How about 10? Ten kilohertz. Okay, um, ten has got distortion on it too, so you're not gonna do this. Not gonna use this thing for ten kilohertz. Maybe for some audio, you know, injecting audio signals. But uh, um, no, at ten kilohertz, it's not going to give you a clean waveform. How about nine? Nine kilohertz on. No. Still fail, still distorted. Okay, we'll try eight kilohertz. Still some some crossover distortion here. Seven kilohertz. It's getting better. Six kilohertz. Still some distortion. My uh, 50 year old HP will do a better job. Our 55 year old HP will do a better job than this. Five kilohertz. Okay, we're we're having less. We're having less of an issue now at five kilohertz. How about four? Yeah, you see the distortion as we're dropping in frequency. The distortion is also becoming less. Three kilohertz should be pretty clean. Still a little bit of noise. Two kilohertz, a little bit of ripple, but it's getting better. But really, um, this thing here good to about one kilohertz before you start to get serious. Even at one kilohertz, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, a little bit of distortion there. But um, at one kilohertz, it, it would work. So really, in, in, in this is good to one kilohertz. If you're going to go beyond that, then uh, you're going to want to invest in something a little bit. Eh, three kilohertz isn't bad. It's a, there's a little bit, so you can go to three. Go up to four again. You see, it, we get to four kilohertz. We're starting to get this little bit of uh, a wiggle here on the on the waveform. That should be nice and clean, but it's not. So, in reality, it is what it is. Let's take it apart. So as I say, setting it is, is really quite simple. Cursor moves over your display and then you just up and down to the frequency you want. Run and stop. There's a filter button here. I don't see what the filter seems to do much. 
Um, does it do anything in other modes? I don't see anything that this filter is doing. I don't see any difference it's making on the waveform. And the DC offset, well, we saw what that did. Let's take this thing apart and see what's inside it. Just held together with just some regular Phillips screws. Okay, after our struggle with those screws, this is what's inside. Let's just see whether we can remove this display and get a look at what's underneath it. Okay, this thing's based on an Atmega 48 PU, is it? Let's see here. Can't see it on camera. It's a an Atmega 48PA-PU processor. It's uh, all surface mounted components as you can see and the back side of the board there's nothing. Just the soldering and uh, looks like somebody could have cleaned up that board a little more but uh, that's beside the point. It's um, it is what it is. It does what they say. Here's the display board and it's just a standard display board off the shelf top matrix display board but that's the unit itself I'm gonna throw it back together now not really much to see in this thing it does what they say it does which is uh, it'll generate a sine wave a square wave triangle wave Sawtooth and a reverse sawtooth. Uh, you're good up to what, what did we figure it was around uh, four kilohertz, somewhere in there, before the uh, waveform starts to get distorted. That is going to be a limitation of the actual at mega itself because we're going to be getting beyond its clock frequency, and of course, we're going to be limited to uh, what its maximum frequencies are. So. It is what it is. It's a function generator. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. Your mileage may vary. That's it. Function generator. It's an FG100 DDS function generator from Banggood. We'll catch you in the next one.